This is Greg, also known as Palmdale Harner. Today's project uses dangerous line voltage. Please be careful. It can be harmful or fatal. If you're not sure exactly what to do, please seek professional help. Better safe than sorry. Today's project is a hot wire foam cutter. It's a bow style cutter, but we're going to focus mostly on the power supply. The bow is kind of a variable component that can be made different sizes and shapes and actually could be a table. As a matter of fact, in one of our future installments, we're going to build a table style bow. The parts for this project are all very easy to obtain at Home Depot or Radio Shack, um, except for one, and that is the nichrome wire that's for the bow. Uh, that's actually not difficult to obtain either. Just go to eBay, type in nichrome, N-I-C-H-R-O-M-E, and wire in the search box. That's going to yield you a list. Uh, look for 26 gauge. I bought a spool, it was 100 feet, and I think it cost me around $3, which included shipping. The other thing that's a little tricky is the transformer. The transformer I spec in the parts list comes from Radio Shack. There are probably cheaper places to get it. It's 120 volt to 12.6 volt AC and 3 amp current capacity. That transformer costs $11.49 in June of 2014. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the assembly. Take your four inch square box and the transformer. Set the transformer in the box. Mark the holes for the mounting tabs. I drilled them using a bench top drill press because it's what I have, but you don't have to have one for this project. You can use a hand drill. Go ahead and drill the holes. Just remember if you're using a hand drill and drilling through metal, sometimes when you approach the far side of metal, you'll get a grab and it'll want to spin the box. So if you've got clamps, it's very wise to clamp the box down. Next, go ahead and take the small screws and poke them up through the holes. Slide your transformer on, put the flat washers, the lock washers, and then the nuts and tighten everything up. Next, take the conduit adapter. S take it apart and slide the pieces over the AC wire. Knock out one of the half inch knockouts in the four inch box that's not in front of the transformer. Slide the conduit adapter with the wire in it through the hole, slip the jam nut over the piece of wire, and tighten everything up. Make sure you leave yourself six or eight inches of wire inside the box. We need it to make some connections with in a very short moment. Okay, now it's time to attach the extension ring and the mud ring. The extension ring should have a couple of slots in it, and the 4-inch box should have a couple of screws protruding from the front. Simply slide the slots over the screws and tighten the screws up on the box. The mud ring attaches in the same fashion. It just slides over the screws on the extension ring on the opposite corners and tighten them up. Okay, now it's time to wire this thing up. The dimmer has two wires sticking out of it. Mine has two black wires. By the way, my dimmer has a slider. Don't panic. You don't have to have one with a slider. Buy the cheapest one you can buy. If that's a rotary one, that's okay too. Take the white wire from the AC cord and connect it to one of the black wires on the transformer. Take the black wire from the AC cord and connect it to one of the wires on the dimmer. Take the remaining wire on the dimmer and connect it to the remaining wire on the transformer. Use the wire nuts and make sure you reinforce the wire nuts with electrical tape. I know it sounds crazy. These things have a way of coming undone. Put the crimp connectors on the yellow wires from the transformer and connect them to the ter terminal strip. Mount the dimmer and the mud ring in one of the slots. This particular terminal strip, I have no idea where it came from. It seems to be a four-position terminal strip. It may be Radio Shack, it may have come from eBay, I'm not sure. It was very lucky that the hole spacing on the mounting of the terminal strip happens to be exactly that of the two gang spacing. So I was able to simply use the screws and screw it in. Don't panic. If yours is, it doesn't fit, just drill a couple of holes someplace where it's convenient and attach it to the box using screws and nuts. I should mention that the wire coloring is going to be specific to the components you purchase. How do I know to use the black wires versus the yellow wires on the transformer? Well, that's what the package told me. It told me that the black wires were connected to 120 volts and that the yellow wires would be 12 
5.6 volts. By the way, this transformer actually has three wires on the output side, two yellow and one black. The black one just gets capped off and taped and hidden in the box. Just make sure it can't make contact with anything. It's there so that if you wanted to have a lower voltage, that is 3.6 volts instead of 12.6 volts, you could. But we'll use both yellow wires for our installation. Okay, on to the bow. The bow is really simple. This one's made out of some reused half-inch PVC. Note that it's black. This one's about 12 or 13 inches deep and around 13 or 14 inches wide. It's just got a couple of elbows, uh, PVC elbows. It's just press fit together. There's no glue holding this together and there's a good reason for it. To proceed with making it, go ahead and cut your PVC to the appropriate lengths and get your elbows and kind of press fit everything together to make sure that it's all about the right size. Go ahead then and mark a couple of holes about three quarters in from the end. Go ahead and drill the holes and slip your eye bolts through the holes uh, with the eyes facing the center of the bow. Take your wire, strip it, put the loop style crimp connectors on it, slide them on, slip the nuts down and tighten everything up. Go ahead and assemble everything. Next, cut a length of nichrome wire about four or five inches longer than the width of the bow. Slip it through the eyes and then just simply kind of twist it around itself to make it snug just so it can't come off. Twist it around itself about a dozen times, nice and snug. Don't worry if there's some slack in it. There's an easy way to deal with that. All you need to do is just twist the pipes in the elbows so that it puts a little tension on the wire. And a little tension is all you need. It only needs to stay so that the wire has uh, electrical contact with the eye. Go ahead and take the other end of the wire, strip them, and put the crimp connectors on the spade styles and connect them to your barrier strip. Um, at this time then, go ahead and take some cable ties and just get control of the wire so it stays out of your way. You want to put cable ties in a few spots along, along the bow just so that you don't get tangled up in the wire when you go to use it. This is really very simple to use. At this point, you're pretty much ready to plug it in and turn it on. Make sure your dimmer switch is off before you turn it on and make sure that the bow is not in contact with anything. Remember, this project uses line voltage, which is dangerous. It can even kill you. Do remember, it's a hot wire foam cutter. It gets hot. It can burn you. It can catch things on fire. Please be very careful when building and using this device. One more thing. The AC cord I had was recycled from some appliance at my house, probably a vacuum cleaner or something. It had only two wires, a black and a white. Please use one that has three wires. That third wire should be either green or bare copper. Connect that one to the box. You could put a spade connector on it and connect it where the, uh, where the transformer nut is. Just run an extra nut down on top of it. That will provide a safe path to ground in the event that the electricity manages to make contact with the box. Do as I say, not as I do.